There's been a ton of questions about Nintendo's 2024 lineup, but I have a good idea on some long rumored games and when they are going to be coming, like The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD, Twilight Princess HD, and other first party titles, Metroid Prime 2, Metroid Prime 3, anyone, and maybe a bit more. Now, we know that Nintendo's first half is set. We've got Endless Ocean, Luminous coming on May 2nd, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door on May 23rd, and Luigi's Mansion 2 HD on June 20th. 27th. So what's going on with the rest of the year? And that seems to be the big question as rumors swirl that Nintendo will be launching their next generation Switch, Nintendo Switch 2, Super Switch, whatever you want to call it in early 2025. Now I do have a good idea of some of these ports, remasters. I think I know when they're going to be coming out. But before we get into any of this, what's good everyone? OJ here. Welcome back to another video. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you are someone new, click that notification bell, and drop a comment below on your favorite Legend of Zelda and Metroid games or favorite Zelda or Metroid titles. Now, let's go ahead and jump into this here. Let's first start off with the Legend of Zelda. So I do think that we will. I know it's been rumored. I know it's been memed. I know there's been a million different videos with the huge Nintendo Switch and oh my gosh, it's coming. Wind Waker and all that. We've all done that before. I get it. But I do think now that Nintendo's in this last stretch, they wanted to get their new games out. Most of their big heavy hitters have already came out last year and the years before i think it's now time to bring out the legend of zelda wind waker hd and twilight princess hd and i think these games will be coming summer or fall ish now if you remember the legend of zelda skyward sword hd that was released in july of 2021 so i'm thinking that they want to have that summer slash beginning of fall type of momentum with the nintendo switch and obviously releasing two highly requested ports remasters of zelda games that people love so much at this point especially after you know multiple years of the legend of zelda breath of the wild and that style kind of going back to the traditional zelda 3d formula not the traditional zelda formula originally with the nes because contrary to popular belief the legend of zelda did not start with legend of zelda ocarina of time i know people like to say that's the traditional but no actually the legend of zelda the original on the nes but hey that's a discussion for another day but i want to talk about this because i think this is going to be very interesting to see exactly what they do with these games now will there be a double pack for the legend of zelda wind waker hd and twilight princess Probably not. I'm guessing they're going to be individually priced at or near $60. So we could see $50 MSRP. We could see $60 MSRP. But I do feel that it's going to be based on how enhanced each of these games are or vice versa. Because even if you look at Skyward Sword HD, that game got a lot of improvements and enhancements over the original game. And the frame rate was doubled to 60 frames per second. Both games absolutely need some work and if you played them on the wii u there was definitely some frame rate dips it was for the most part a solid 30 but wind waker some of those like when you're out in the sea and all that when there's effects going on or maybe even like one of the big like octopuses that come out and try to attack you or krakens or whatever the heck that thing's called the frame rate can chug a little bit you also have to remember that both of these games were built specifically for the nintendo wii u they were not simply just the gamecube games brought over it was kind of built for that system they remade multiple different aspects and elements and design so that would kind of have to be done again not too much because obviously there was traditional controls in both of those games you could use a standard controller but if you had the wii u gamepad i actually think that it enhanced the gameplay in both of the titles but specifically for wind waker because the c all looks kind of the same except for certain stuff in the distance and all that and if you have the map you can easily track and kind of mark down and see what's going on so to me the wii u gamepad was very valuable in the legend of zelda wind waker hd and even in twilight princess having all of your options and menus and maps and everything right there on the wii u gamepad was also great now clearly both of these games can be played normally and they released on systems that didn't have that but yeah it's kind of a bummer in terms of that wii u gamepad support because that was one of the few games that truly used the wii u gamepad to i think one of its best uses just overall but if they did bring these games over with nice enhancements people would be okay with that we'll see what happens now let's go ahead and move on to a couple other games here we've got metroid prime 2 and metroid prime 3 now i see these games coming out more towards the fall 
or so. I could be wrong. Maybe we get them in the summertime or around then. But these seem like fall games to me so far since they weren't already revealed at this point. And I think that Nintendo could be taking a Pikmin 1 and 2 approach. Pikmin 1 and 2 released on the Nintendo Switch as a bundled pack. And essentially it wasn't like Pikmin 3 Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch, which that was a pretty nice upgrade when it comes to what they did from the Wii U version to the Nintendo Switch version. Had better resolution, it had enhancements, upgrades, it had new features. There's certain things that they added into the game, new content. It was fantastic. But Pikmin 1 and 2 didn't have any of that, didn't look anywhere near as good. They just essentially took those GameCube games or took the Wii ROMs or whatever you want to say, whatever version that they took, and they essentially just put that, put that on the Nintendo Switch, ported it over. So it looked very similar to the GameCube and Wii versions of Pikmin 1 and 2. And I think that we could see the same thing here with Metroid Prime 2 and 3. Now, we already got Metroid Prime Remastered, which absolutely enhanced the graphics pretty noticeably overall. Not a full remake, but there were a bunch of scenes and there's just so many different things that's a lot cleaner and better looking in Metroid Prime Remastered. I just don't know if they're gonna take the time and effort to do that with Metroid Prime 2 and 3. So I'm thinking that we could see the same thing where they take a double pack, where we could see Metroid Prime 2, Metroid Prime 3, put those on one cartridge and release it out there for 40 to 50 bucks, just like Pikmin 1 and 2 was. So that would be really good if they did that. I think Pikmin was $50 for that game. Metroid Prime Remastered was surprisingly $40. They don't have as much confidence in Metroid and Pikmin overall. So I'm guessing that some of these games will be lower with Metroid at least. They'll be lower than what we'd see with a remaster or re-release of a Zelda game in particular. So yeah, very interesting there. And I do think that there's still an opportunity. There's still a chance that we see Metroid Prime 4 for reveal this year in 2024 i know that's kind of surprising or shocking to some people but it's very possible that metroid prime 4 is revealed there were some rumors that metroid prime 4 could still make it this year and even be released simply on the nintendo switch now i've been of the thought process that nintendo will do a dual launch for metroid prime 4 so what we'll see is that we'll see the game on the nintendo switch and on the switch 2 whenever that decides to launch nintendo has done this a number of times but usually it's with zelda games at least in terms of recently it's been with zelda games we've had stuff like the legend of zelda twilight princess on the gamecube and the wii the legend of zelda breath of the wild on the wii u and the nintendo switch but maybe it's time for metroid to get in on that action and usually it's just based off of when they're developing how long it takes obviously metroid prime 4 has just taken forever to develop they had to restart there's just so many different things and i think at this point they're kind of just like polishing and holding it back a little bit for the full reveal in terms of their plans and what they truly want to do because if they wanted to show us this game by now they could have already shown us this game by now at this point but they're kind of keeping it in the chamber and waiting for that opportune time to reveal this and probably finalize their plans when we're going to be able to get the game and exactly how we're going to be able to play it as well and what systems so we could see that but once again it could be 2025 it could be switch to dual launch heck it could just be just a nintendo switch we just don't know at this point but we'll have to wait on that now the last thing that i want to get into here is the fire emblem 4 remake or genealogy of the holy war this is something that i've talked about so many times on this channel i think you guys are kind of sick of it at this point but i have to mention it again because recently i was watching an episode of the nate the hate podcast shout outs to nate and mvg they have a fantastic podcast on youtube just called nate the hate you'll see his channel check it out and he mentioned in nintendo's upcoming games when they were kind of tired of the nintendo switch they're essentially saying that they're ready for the next system to come and that they still have games coming for the switch but they're ready for the next thing nate just casually mentioned again the fire emblem 4 remake you know genealogy of the holy war so to me if he's mentioning that and i definitely think he's been cross-checking to see if that's happening so i believe it's happening we just don't know when it's coming we haven't seen anything and there's been no other types of leaks with this usually with the fire emblem games after 
some time we might get like a screenshot leak or something might happen but i guess after fire emblem engaged and the fact that that game got leaked so much earlier than the reveal nintendo put the kibosh on who did that nintendo found who did it they found the leaker man and they probably put an end to that nintendo ninjas took care of it because we've seen nothing seriously i would have bet that we would have saw something there would have been something from this game because apparently it's been done or near done or something but i'm just not sure what's going on here so i can see this game very much like fire emblem engage that game was announced i think in like september or so of 2022 and then it was launched in january 2023 so there wasn't really a big turnaround from the game because it was just sitting there done i think that this could be a somewhat similar situation Fire Emblem games usually release in the first half-ish of the year. They usually don't make it to the fall. Most mainline Fire Emblem games. Then we see stuff like Fire Emblem Warriors that can come out kind of at any time. But when it comes to the big main story Fire Emblem games Intelligent Systems makes, they really like to have those out in the first half or summer. Fire Emblem Three Houses, same thing. That was a summer release. Engage, that was a January release. So I see them kind of doing that i see them continuing that tradition even if you want to go all the way back to fire emblem echoes shadows of valentia the last remake that we got of a fire emblem game that title was a first half i think it was like may or so even if you look at fire emblem awakening fire emblem fates all the fire emblem games are usually in that first half usually even earlier in the year so we could see that short turnaround they could announce it at a rumored right it's rumored at this point nintendo direct for april or so or maybe they wait till june and then it comes out a couple months later or like three months later so that's definitely possible overall with this but i would say no later than september or so for a fire emblem 4 remake but what do you guys think about this i know this was a lot of information here we're kind of breaking down a lot of stuff that we went over before but giving my updated take and thoughts on it are there any other games that you think nintendo can have because obviously nintendo is going to have at least maybe one more secret game outside of what i've talked about here or something that we didn't expect nobody expected endless ocean luminous and nobody expected it to be a brand new game unless your name was freaking pioro or something like that right he's the only one that knew but there wasn't really a lot of people in terms of normal people that don't have the inside information that were predicting or guessing what nintendo could have for 2024 that that game was going to be a game and it was going to be brand new out with like 30 players online and developed by an outside studio nintendo funding it that was just kind of random so we could see another game or so like that over the next number of months i would not be surprised that all of something random just comes back as nintendo rounds out the nintendo switch trying to drive the rest of the sales for 2024 then of course opening up what we could see in 2025 so very exciting stuff nonetheless so what are your thoughts on this guys when it comes to the games here where do you think these games could be slotted at if they're coming let me know in the comment section below all right guys that wraps it up for this one here thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it please make sure you hit that like button subscribe Subscribe if you are someone new, click that notification bell, and check out my other Nintendo Switch and RPG videos right here on screen. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace.